everyone. Since lab two tends to be one of the harder labs for whatever reason, not only do I have the video showing you uh, kind of how to work through this with the PDF, I also printed out part two and part three of the lab uh, to show you how you might be able to do these parts. So as with my other video, um, we're looking at with part two, a bunch of points of elevation. And in fact, what this is, is a little mountain in Michigan. And I took a topographic map of that mountain and I specifically marked known points of elevation from what I could see on the map. To you, it looks probably like a jumbled mess and I wouldn't blame you for that. But to orient yourself, I would say, first off, let's look, the highest point represented on the map is 1,460 feet. So that's basically the top of the mountain. And I said, uh, we have a contour interval of 40 feet. That's kind of in the instructions. I can start by drawing my first contour line around the 1460 feet here, 1,460, and say that is 1,440 feet. That we're representing a line or an area of equal elevation, right? As we move out, we see 1,400 here. Well, I think I said in the instructions, if you kind of do it the way I'm recommending here, your next contour line, since it will represent a step down of 40 feet, because the contour interval is 40 feet, the next line around here will be representing 1,400. And you do not have to label them. As you can see, it gets to be a bit of a mess. I can't even do it all that neatly. And then the next line we have will be 1400 minus 40. So then that would be 1360. And I'm looking around as I'm drawing here and I see there's uh, 1200 here, 1200 here, 1220, 1265. So if you have a line like 1360, technically it would be a little closer to a point of elevation like 1265 and further away from 1200, but I don't have a lot of room to work with here. Um, so 1360. So again, we're going down in elevation because we see this being the highest point. 1460, my numbers are kind of dropping in value. And then the next line would actually be 1320. And it gets really tight in here. And remember that when contour lines on a map are closer together, that means you have a steeper slope. I would expect that the contour lines that you draw further out are gonna be further and further apart. Um, we have some high points like 1170 right here is kind of anomalously high compared to other values that are represented but uh we're going down to like 923 but yeah don't be afraid to make a mistake it's okay this is probably a lot of people's first time drawing one of these maps but it gives you an appreciation for the art form I will then move on to part three. We're making an elevation profile from that same Patrick's Basin Quadrangle. And I did explain in an earlier video how to look at the PDF, but there's some benefit to working with paper. If you can't, that's okay, but maybe this will shed a little more light. So I've already messed up my paper quite a bit, uh, but what we're looking at is a line that I drew from A to A prime, just kind of arbitrarily. And you take that line and basically what we're doing is we're slicing the map and we're going to use the contour interval and the contour lines to create a, or to create an elevation profile. So first off, you would label elevation on the Y axis, distance on the X axis. 
And then just take this, fold it. So A to A prime is here. And everywhere you see a contour and line cross this line, the A to A prime, you make a tick mark. That shows you kind of the spacing that you'll use to construct the profile. Okay, so not a whole lot to that. And with that, you need to study the map a little bit. Say my contour interval is 40 feet here. I have some information just from this part of the map alone. Uh, we have 5,400 feet at this index line. Index lines are bold, right? Um, we have 5,000 feet shown here. It's easy to get lost, especially if you are kind of new to this. But one thing I do now, just making a note, it doesn't matter how messy you get, that's 5,400 feet. So, we know this is going up in elevation. It's going up in elevation. So, because the contour interval is 40 feet, this would represent 54, 40. All right. And then 54, 80. Fifty-five, twenty. Those are our values, and you can tell from uh, the direction that these contour interval or, or contour lines are pointing upstream versus downstream on the creek that we're now going down in elevation. So you would be subtracting. 40 feet for each of these lines. Now let's stick to our line here until you get to this next index line, which is like 5200. And in fact, this one's kind of encapsulated as well 5200 here. Same line, 5,200. And then we knew that this one is 5,000. Okay, so excuse my ugly notes here. I do recommend using a pencil so you can erase. Um, but you're going to have your elevation here plotted and these are elevation values so I would say the max value on this axis will probably be about 5600 and then the minimum if you want to make it look kind of nice it would be probably eh, a little bit under 4800 That's what you can do. And don't forget this tick mark here, this uh, contour line. I'm not gonna go through and plot every single thing. Like I said, just estimating here, say you had 5,600 max, 4,800, and I'm not counting what's in between, but you just need to plot the elevation change here, as it kind of goes, it's going to go down and up and then all the way down again. I even have a, a profile that I took from Google Earth just to show you the approximate shape. But I want to see points for every contour line through here. Okay. If you are using the PDF, you can kind of draw a line on the PDF all the way down to get you these tick marks and the appropriate spacing. Just make sure that you're focusing on the A to A prime line and don't get distracted by everything going on here and here.
But if you have any questions, you can always contact me.